Okay, welcome to another SQLite video. This has been a series so far we're on, I think this is video three. And today we're gonna to talk about how do I create a table easily, at least I think it's pretty easy, and I think you will too, in SQLite using a application called Database Browser for SQLite. And before we get started, if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing, that way you don't miss any in the future. We might throw some videos out here that you might find useful, and uh, you don't wanna miss those. And I just got done drinking iced coffee, I don't know why I like to preface these videos with what I'm drinking, but I like to think you guys care. So before we get started with the creating of a table, we need to learn the different data types in SQLite. And really there are five different data types and in SQLite, they like to call these storage classes. So if we scroll down to the bottom, and I'll have this link down in the description if you wanna go check it out for yourself, but there are five, there's integer, and here are the different examples of what can be an integer that you might've seen in a different language. There's text, the most popular probably being the var char, as I call it, or var car, or care, I don't know, however you guys pronounce it. There's none, or just blob, which is a bunch of just binary information. Uh, there's real, and then there's numeric. And so what I wanna do in this example is I wanna create a table using database browser for SQLite to capture some personal information. This seems to be the most prevalent example when creating a database table is you create a database table to hold information about different people. So the first thing we're gonna do obviously is open database browser for SQLite. If you don't know what this application is, go check out my very first video in the series where we install this and talk about what it's used for. It's just a nice GUI application to manage uh, your SQLite database. And then in the last video, we went ahead and we created a test database in the command line. So let's open that up. So I'm gonna open database. I put this database, if you recall, in the temp directory of the C drive. So here it is, test.db, we'll open it. And there's nothing in here right now. We see there's zero tables. But right here's a button. It might be hard for you to see because it's kind of small, but it says create table. So if we click that, here is a nice little GUI to help us create this table. So let's call the table people, and then down below we can add all of the different fields or columns of this table. So I'm gonna hit add field. Let's do the basic name, or I guess rather ID, which is going to be an integer, and this auto increment I'm going to check because as we add people, it'll go ahead and add that ID incrementally. And we'll also make this the primary key because that's what's going to be distinct and unique amongst all of these people. Maybe I'll make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so what other fields can we add? And you can feel free to do some of your own if you think of different ones. So we have ID, let's do name. That one's going to be of type text. And actually maybe we should do first name and do a second one with last name, which is also type text. And then maybe their email address. So we'll do email, which is type text and age which can also be an integer. And this NN field is not null, so if we have a requirement, the primary key is gonna be required, so it's not gonna be able to be null. But the rest of these, if we want to make sure that when something's being inserted into this table for this particular field, we can check this and make sure they're not null when being inserted. So I'll just make all of these not null because we'll make all of these, I guess, required. I think that's a good start for our people table, so go ahead and hit okay. And now we can see under tables, we have our sequence, which is going to be related to that auto increment primary key for the ID. And then we also have the people table. And if I switch to this browse data tab, here's the drop down for the different tables. The one we care about specifically is people. And as you can imagine, there's no records in here. But we accomplished what we set out to do in this video, which was easily, at least I think it was easy, hopefully you did too, create a table in SQLite. So I'll go ahead and write these changes, and now we'll go close the database. And there you go. In the next video, we'll talk about how do I insert records into our people table, and stay tuned for that.